Um, so what, just tell us Collingwood, right? I want to I look at Collingwood from the outset here. Is it dire straits for the Pies as we sit here? In terms of playing finals, I think it is, and I think that puts a lot of pressure on the coach. Are you putting a oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you putting a line through their finals already? Not yet, but uh, they go to Perth uh, to play the West Coast Eagles, yeah. and I think they'll be one and four by the end of this next weekend, and that puts them probably just about out of the finals mix. And, and, and as an extension of that, are you suggesting if Collingwood don't make the finals and perform well, then Nathan I, Buckley's I think gone? that, uh, in my opinion, when a coach, you leave your coach to be unsigned which is very rare, mm. and then they don't make the finals, and he's been there for 10 years. Uh, my feeling is that um, it's probably pretty much a 50-50 line ball, but I'd more has a guess that he won't, won't coach Collingwood next year. Mm. Based on one, don't make the finals, leave a coach out of contract, I think they'll definitely be looking around to see if there's a better option out there, and Ooh. if there's not, well, I think uh, obviously he might be able to get a reprieve, but I just wonder whether Nathan would feel after 10 years We've missed the finals. Is it time for new blood to come through? Kick off a premiership, coach. Yeah, so uh, don't know, it's a big claim, TJ. Yeah, no, no, I, yeah. just, I just feel a bit uneasy because, you know, there's every chance they'll go over to the Perth. Yeah, that's right. And, like they did in the finals last year yeah. when no one gave them the chance, come back and we're suddenly pumping up Nathan Buckley. And we again. saw Leon Cameron do what he did yesterday, which yeah. can is happen it, very quickly. Is it different to the year, and they were 0 and 2, they went out and played Carlton, I think, to make them 0 and 3. They won that game. That was the year they made the grand final. Can you see them doing that again, or is it just nobody could see them doing making the grand final after two rounds that year. Is it all gone? I mean, is it a depth issue? Uh, I think it is a depth issue. So let's take a look at what went on last night and what Nathan needs to do, I think, to get his team potentially playing finals. And that is uh, their turnovers. So who's their best run and carry player? I know Quainor's back there, but he had his hands full with uh, Toby Green, which we'll Probably talk about. side bottom. Side bottom, yeah. So when side bottom and Penelbury are still your best players, Penelbury, yeah. well... They're that's 30 right. plus builds. Well, they're, and they're one paced yeah, midfield. That's, right. that's, that's yeah. their problem. Who's in there that gives them something different? And well, Kane, when we talk about the fast paced speed game that's on at yeah. the moment, do Collingwood do that enough? No, well, they, well, they don't. And there's, there's issues across the park for them. Now, the, 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 the turnovers are one thing. We're going to get to their clearances in a minute. There's some games you just have to win, TJ. And you're going to show um, the reasons why. But GWS with seven players under 10 games, winless. Coming to the MCG, that's a game you just have to win. and Have a look at this. That's why. Look at that. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? That's who the Giants didn't have at their disposal last night, and that's who Collingwood didn't have at their disposal mm. last night. So, Lordo, getting back to what you said initially, there are absolutely no excuses there. And if, if, that, if, if Collingwood's all bar one, a full list to go into, and they can't beat the Giants that's got a, a list like that, then they are in all sorts. And know what the Giants did? They put in kids... And they, you know, obviously they've lost uh, Canilio and they lost uh, Matty DeBoer and they lost Phil Davis. Yep. Kids come in, they got quicker. Yep. Uh, Essendon, through injuries. Shield goes out, Draper goes out. Kids have come in. It's actually made the side better. Sydney. So Collingwood, Sydney as well. So Collingwood need to find out about who's underneath this list because... Who have they got, Lauder? Um, well, that's the point. I think mm. Kelly, we look forward to seeing Ned's Will, boy. Will Kelly. Ned's yeah. boy come in uh, and whoever else is in their BFL side. Just because mm. I think guys like Josh Thomas, mm. um, Will hoskin Elliott, I know he was OK last night. There's a lot of guys who have been around, mm. had a lot of opportunities Roughly. that haven't performed There's, well. Uh, yeah. And, of course, they desperately need young Dacos, the yeah, Nick Dacos. Dacos. Yeah, you know, desperately need him. That's no lay down as there either, is it? As we read through the week. Look, they'll get him. It's just they'll have to give up um, the, the, the world to get him yeah. um, as a result of the skill that he's got and other clubs going to bid on him. So. Well, we are going to talk about uh, some positives to come out of that game for GWS, but I'm not sure, Kane, you're going to deliver that for us because it is volcano oh. time. <laughs> well, the issue it is, as we get into it, is the stoppage work as well. So Brody Grundy last week dominated around the ground, dominated the hitouts up against Tom Fullerton. Brisbane had four hitouts and lost the clearances. And last night again... Basically going up against a ruck coach. Like Shane Mumford has been around for a long time, retired, came back. He doesn't want to play at the moment. He wants to be on the list and coaching and helping, and he's forced to play, and this is what happened. They dominate the clearances again. Now, that's not Mumford. That's Finlayson up against Cox. Poor effort from him. But their ability not to maximise Brody Grundy's dominance in there is one of their biggest issues. And for what Shane Mumford did, off ruck coach. no preparation, well, he basically is, <laughs> he, he was on the list to be backup, backup, insurance, play maybe five games. Yeah. He's gone up against a million-dollar man, and he's done that last night. He was, he, was, he was enormous. Well, that's what they need to find out, because when you look at the numbers... One paced. Hit outs, um, 83 to 4 last week. Sorry, I think it was 64 to 4. Clearances they lose. Last night, 46 to 18. They lose the clearances again. It's their biggest issue at the moment, the disconnect with their Ruckman and their midfield. 
Nathan Buckley spoke uh, post-match. He's not sure whether it's the training me mechanisms they've got, whether it's an attitude issue, whether it's the composition of the team, but he has pledged change. Leon Cameron, alternatively, has uh, praised his team for the toughness they displayed. He got belted up at contested ball, which that hasn't been consistent over the, last, over the first month of the season, so that's something that we, um, we have to look at. We think we've picked the best sides to get results, and we haven't. So we've got to look at changes, whether that's the way we play, the way we prepare, or personnel. Like there's, there's plenty of things that will, will be assessed in that regard. I mean, we had a poor year last year. We put a hand up, but it wasn't good enough. We said at the start of the year, and we'll continue to say, is that we want to be hard to play against. Win, lose, or draw, we want to be hard to play against. We've probably been three out of four. Um, and we need to be hard against Sydney next week. TJ, you referred to the, the depth of, of Collingwood. And, and Lordo, this played out in the trade period last year. It's not as if we're reacting to the one and three scoreline they've got after four rounds. You could almost see this coming, this stage of this season already, in that trade period. Those decisions they made were horrendous. And they had nothing um, to do to with form, but, but um, salary cap issues. Yeah, they absolutely botched the trade period. And we're always going to say, well, pressure's going to be on if they start the season poorly. Kane, we talked about it for hours mm. through that period. You let go Adam Chalor, Jaden Stevenson Tom and, Phillips. and Tom Phillips. It was always going to hurt your depth unless you had good young kids who you thought were better and could replace them. But we're not seeing that. And suddenly that's put a lot of pressure on the depth of Collingwood. And all three are playing well too. Yeah, and it's farcical demo really that Collingwood are paying a fair chunk of Trelaw's wage who is dominating mm. for the latter leader, yeah. West Coast, uh, Western half Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah. Half his wage for a team that you're going to be probably jostling for that eighth spot. So farcical is the word that Lordo used. And look, if they started the season well and they got some wins on the board, perhaps it goes under the radar. Now this start... It's going to be a massive talking point. I think the psychological damage that it did to the rest of the group as well, you've got to factor that in. OK, a final point on this match before we move on. No, we're going to talk about how good the Giants were in their first well, win. Well, that, that would be a final point in this And match, yeah. Captain Green was outstanding. The captain, of course, last night. All Australian form, no doubt about that. He's a good shot on goal. He led from the front. And his teammates love him. They get around him, they love him. And he gets them going with his demeanour. I don't know about his words and things like that, but his demeanour... He's calm. And he's out there and he gets his teammates going. They love him. Well done, Captain Toby Green. I think he'll be their captain next year, Bill. Right. I think their neighbour here replaces Stephen Canilio as their skipper next year. What so, a great uh, turnaround. Yeah, yeah. ripping player. Mm. Yeah, he's... Uh, well... On the field, off the field, he's got great respect. Just want to talk about the Giants' ball movement. They were really slow. They were lazy against the Fremantle Dockers in Perth two weeks ago. But this was them last night. This is what I loved about it. I think they've worked hard on this over the last two That's weeks. Funny. So Leon Cameron cops it a little bit. Oh. But I think they have focused on... We've got to be more dynamic. Which is what we're talking about with Nathan Buckley. Yep. So... The, that's uh, Daniels, exceptional. He's quick and he's speed. Finlayson was uh, obviously got on the end of that last night. Lockie Ash, Bill. I think his pace. Where they does call he come him from. He in, in draft, draft circles. Pick. He was called Lockie Dash. That's how uh, what they called about Lockie Dash. And what is this? The run, the overlap. It's what Collingwood struggled with. Doesn't Toby Green love that? When you have run down the corridor. That it transformed the uh, the Giants last night. This is Bobby Hill. Oh, Bobby. He's just finding his way at AFL level. This speed, how dynamic they were. Again, Toby Green gets on the end of it. They were too quick for Collingwood last night, and you couldn't have said that about a Giants side Hold two on. weeks ago.